Welcome to this quick guide on how you can use LandSuper to monitor your mitigation process for the latest Microsoft Office vulnerability. Uh, this Office vulnerability has been kind of dubbed the Storm 0978 vulnerability due to the fact that that's the code name that Microsoft gave the threat actor that is actively abusing this vulnerability. It's doing so by sending emails with Office files attached to it, which then trigger or abuse the vulnerability. Um, it is both targeted at defense and government entities in Europe and North America. Um, so either, you know, especially if you're one of those, if you fall into those categories, or even if you're, you fall outside of them, it's important that you try and update your devices, your software as soon as possible so that you make sure that you're not vulnerable or that you implement the mitigation options as well in order to ensure that the vulnerability cannot be abused in your environment. Um, so let's jump into LandSuper and I'll show you the different ways that you can kind of take a look at which devices are vulnerable, but also how you can monitor the mitigation process if um, you know, you're know you one of those outliers. So first up, we're going to take a look at identifying the devices that could be vulnerable. Um, and the easiest way to do that is go take a look at software. So we're gonna head here over into the software tab. And my easiest option is just to type in Office in the search box. That'll bring up all of the software titles that have Office in it in some way. Um, even though this gives me more than I really want to see, uh, it's quite easy for me to narrow this down. You can see that we have two Office installations here. Um, this will be older Office ones, and then we of the newer Office 365, we have eight. Um, if you want to make this a more permanent thing, uh, the easiest thing to do is just go ahead and add a advanced filter. We're going to do the name will be equal to, and we already know the two names because we just seen them. So it'll be Office, and then we'll add a second one where we'll add the name is equal to, and then Office 365. We can apply that. that will immediately filter everything for us. Um, and this gives us the option of also saving this view. So we're going to save it, call it something like uh, Microsoft Office uh, versions. Hit the Save button there. And that will give us basically a view that we can always come back to. And if I head back over to all of these software, you can easily see custom views. Here's my Microsoft Office versions. That will give me that. Even if I want to later on share this with some of my colleagues, maybe I have someone that's you know specifically hired for cybersecurity, um, I can quickly go ahead and share the view with specific accounts, with everyone, uh, however you like as well. So that option is there. This gives you all the details as well. Shows you exactly which devices, you know, which versions do you have, how many of those versions do you have, which devices are those things installed on, um, et cetera. So you have all the details right there to quickly get a view of exactly which devices are vulnerable or could be vulnerable. If you want this in a different format, we also have a specific report built for it. So if you search for Office, uh, you'll most likely be able to quickly find the Microsoft Office uh, 365 or Microsoft Office version audit. That will just quickly give you that entire list that you might need uh, in one go. So we get the details here of the asset, as well as the software name, publisher, and the specific version. And you can use this list to quickly check, okay, am I on the version that is required? In this case, Microsoft has said that for Office 365, you'll need version 2302 or higher. Um, so you can see here we have 12208. Um, and this one would be the one that we make sure that we update that one as soon as possible because that device will still be vulnerable. Next up, we're going to take a look at mitigation. Um, so this is more about taking a look at, okay, which devices do I know are vulnerable, which ones are already safe. So you have kind of that peace of mind, you have that overview and you know which ones um, you'll have to take a deeper look at. So for the actual mitigation, uh, Microsoft was recommending that you add some registry keys to prevent the uh, exploitation from actually taking place. Um, if you kind of block a few things using registry keys, um, the exploitation will not be successful. So even if your users click on one of a, you know, a file that is trying to abuse a vulnerability, um, it won't actually be successful. Um, so for that, we're actually gonna switch to our classic interface um, to take a look there. So for the mitigation, we're interested in specifically monitoring the progress of the mitigation and how it's been applied. And for that, we wanna make sure that we can monitor or keep an eye on the specific registry keys that Microsoft has uh, set that you can change, that you can add in order to mitigate 
the vulnerability. So for that, I'm gonna head over to scanning and then under file and registry scanning is where you can add these specific registry keys. They're here all the way at the bottom. You can see I've added, I think there's like nine of them, uh, specific registry keys um, that you wanna keep an eye on. All of these should be set and should have a value of one in order to actually uh, successfully mitigate the vulnerability. Now, once you've added all of these, simply rescan all of your devices. That will re-grab or grab all that information again. And then you can use the report that um, you can import into the on-prem as well in order to kind of get an overview of all of those um, specific values and see which devices have those registry keys enabled, which ones do not. Um, and which ones have the right values and which ones do not, just to make sure that you can monitor the process of your mitigation. Has it been applied everywhere or not? So let's take a look at that here. We're gonna head over to reports. And then if we look here for office, um, I've already imported the report for this specific installation. So if we open it here, we'll get the full overview. So here with the report, we get some of the basic details of the devices at the beginning. Um, the specific registry keys will be at the end of the report where we can see for each specific registry key value, um, we indicate for each asset, each device, whether the registry key has been found and the value that it had. Now, for a lot of these, because I've only just implemented it in one test device, there will be no um, but to give you an example of what it would look like if it has been applied, I can simply, you know, you can use any of the columns to filter on. Um, so that, that also makes it a lot easier to find specific devices that might not have a certain value or might have a certain value, um, being able to filter on all of those specific columns. Um, but if I add yes in one of them, it will quickly give me an overview of here, the one device that I did already add as a test. You can see here, if I scroll away to the left, my specific test VM that I've added the registry keys to. You can see I've already added the, the correct value as well, which is the value one. That's a value that they need to have. If you want to disable the mitigation, you can just revert that to have a value of zero. But in this case, the mitigation has been applied. All of the value, all the registry keys have the value one. I can quickly confirm that. Okay, we're good to go for this one. Um, I can remove the filter and go back to my complete overview to get a complete list again. And basically you can use that to monitor exactly which devices have the mitigation applied, which ones do not, so that you have that complete overview, go through the list, make sure that all your devices are mitigated before the deadline that was given, um, so that you're sure that you are not vulnerable. You know, nobody, no users in your environment can, uh, can be made abuse of um, and that your environment is completely protected. So with that, we've seen some of these steps that you can do within Land Super to actually monitor your mitigation process of this specific vulnerability. Obviously, there's much more to discover here, many more options, many more functionalities that I haven't covered um, that are not as quickly or not directly related to this specific vulnerability, but I encourage you to explore those, take a look at them. Uh, if you don't have Land Super yet, obviously, start your free trial. You can use that to mitigate or monitor at least your mitigation process of this vulnerability and then explore the rest, see if it's useful for you in other use cases as well. Um, and with that, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.